Hello and happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Hey, everybody. I see some are still on. connecting to audio. Hello, future and current TikTokers. <laughs> Nice to see everybody here today. I see some new faces, some new names, and some old ones, which is awesome. We still got some people rolling in here. Let's do a couple more minutes. We'll get started. While we're waiting, uh, drop in the chat. Let us know, um, you know, what your role is and um, what you're excited to learn about TikTok today. Yeah. And where are you from? Where are you calling from? Yeah. Okay. We currently are in lovely Columbia, Maryland. Jared and I are in the office in Columbia, Maryland, which is positioned right between Baltimore and DC. Ben, I believe you're in Chicago, right? That's correct. Yeah. Ben's in Chicago. What's up, Jack? How are you? Great. How are you Good guys? To see I'm you. In, uh, sunny Philadelphia. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice always sunny in philadelphia i heard <laughs> yep <laughs> atl adam represent what's going on got atl in the house very nice colorado springs all right wow Love it. good so we're spanning the the whole entire nation here i love it oh we got a nevada in the house okay calling in nice nice very cool That's awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Um, welcome to another exciting edition of the Growth Clinic. Uh, for those of you that have never been here before, we have a lot of new faces today, so welcome. Uh, this is a community event we host every week at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We invite our friends, colleagues, and partners to join. And each week, we feature an expert from our team uh, to share insights and answer your questions on the latest and greatest digital marketing topics. And the whole goal is to help you guys grow and succeed in your business or marketing career. Um, if you guys enjoy this session, we encourage you uh, to invite your colleagues and friends. You can send them the registration link via the calendar invite to sign up. And if you guys have any questions about any of the tools or resources we talk about um, on the session today, we're here. Uh, I'll leave my uh, email in the chat. Feel free to follow up and ask any questions. We're here to help. Um, uh, without further ado, just quick intro. I'm Jared Flegel. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Web Mechanics, uh, joined by our fearless leader uh, and CEO, Chris Mechanic. Um, Hello. And we have a special guest with us today uh, who we'll introduce here briefly because uh, today we are talking about TikTok and specifically TikTok ads. So as you guys know, TikTok is blowing up. Um, it is, uh, I believe in 2021, surpassed Google in terms of overall web traffic, which is crazy to think about. Um, so the question is how can we leverage TikTok to grow our business, to drive our marketing? Um, and uh, TikTok is a very different platform. It's very unique in a lot of ways. So um, we really wanted to get an expert on here that has experience with the platform or can help us leverage ads in particular to start getting, um, help us drive more business and ROI through, through this new emerging channel. And uh, that guest we have with us today is uh, actually an, a deep expert in paid social. He came from the affiliate marketing world. And for those of you that are familiar with the affiliate marketing world, uh, you live or die by the performance of your dollar, right? So every dollar you put out there onto an ad channel has to deliver an ROI. So Ben's been through the trial by fire. He knows how to make these channels work to deliver results. And uh, Ben Liska is our special guest today joining us, our paid social manager. Ben, welcome to the party. Glad to be here. Awesome. So let's dive right in. Let's talk TikTok. So um, I guess first off, why is now the best time for brands to start running TikTok ads? Like why is now a good time to get started on the platform? So as of right now, I mean, TikTok is surpassed Facebook, it surpassed Instagram as the most time on platform. And in 2022, they're, <clears throat> they're forecasting to for users to spend on average 38 minutes. And I mean, the biggest thing that stood out to me, I was research, I was reading a study by Neuro Insights. TikTok outperforms all other social media platforms in approach and engagement responses. So what are those? Approach correlates with likability and like spontaneous in the moment action. So an unplanned purchase, you know, filling out a form to get more information about a product. And uh, TikTok was shown to be 44% stronger than other social media platforms on average in this department. 
The other thing that stood out was engagement, which quantifies personal relevance of the content people are shown. And mostly it correlates with memory and retention of content. So this helps us predict like in the future, how people are gonna like future buying and decision-making processes. So people see a product on TikTok, then they go to, you know, Kmart or whatever down, you know, two weeks later and see the same product on the shelf and they decide to buy it. So in this category, TikTok was 15% stronger than other platforms. The other thing is, I mean, cheap CPMs. I mean, I saw four to $12 CPMs, you know, I'm sure it's a little higher, you know, depending on vertical. Um, <clears throat> So, and Ben, I'm um, sorry to interrupt you, but what is that? How does that compare to other channels? Like, how does that compare to Facebook or LinkedIn CPM wise? On Facebook and lead gen, I'd be, I'd be ecstatic if I saw, you know, 15 to $25 CPMs, I'd be jumping for joy. So more than double basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in some cases it's triple. So, so, so TikTok has more engaged traffic that's more likely to approach. They're spending more time on the platform and you can get in front of them for half the cost, basically. And they're spending more money. And they're spending more money. So, so very yeah. quick, very quick, just like chat survey, put a yes or a no in the chat. Do you, have you been on TikTok personally? Have you ever been on the platform or used it? I'm interested just in quick yes or no answers. Yes, yes, yes. So I have as well, but I've, I have to limit myself. It's like super addictive, like going on there. It's like hard. It's like literally hard to get off. And there, um, so usually I go on there for work purposes only, but I definitely like, it is very just compelling and catchy. Like it, yeah. and it looks like most of you have already been on it. So, you know, all right, back to you. So that. That also kind of feeds into why TikTok works so well. Their algorithm is super, super, super good at predicting what type of content you'll like. So if you're into cars, I'm into cars. So naturally I, you know, engage and watch. One of the factors that TikTok looks at is actually whether or not you watch a video for specific hashtags toward, to the end, whether you like it, what type of creators you engage with. And it continues to show you videos in that specific community and they call you know car talk or mechanic talk whatever the you know specific talk community may be and this also kind of allows us to hyper target you know hyper target ads to specific hashtags and niches as well i mean and because of this we're showing people ads they want to see ads they want to engage with products they you know might have a need for this also leads to like a 23% higher detail memory than like TV ads or, e and I believe it was 15% higher than Google. So it's, it just works. Wow. So it's like sticky. It like, like sticks in people's brains more strongly and it gets them to act, you know, more readily, which is, which is wild. Um, so, so that's on, uh, one actually tactical question, um, Jack asked, as how do we know what constitutes an impression on TikTok? So for running ads, is that like a half second or something like that? Like how does TikTok measure that? It is a six second view. I believe that's what they factor as an impression. Six second view. Interesting, gotcha. Which is, that's higher than, I think Facebook's three second, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. It is three seconds actually. Yeah. So... So yeah, so that's that's fascinating. So, so what are some things you mentioned? Some things that are fundamentally different in terms of the value proposition of TikTok. As like a um, I, an advertiser, how is TikTok fundamentally different? And are, are there some similarities with other platforms? Yeah, I mean there are definitely similarities with other platforms in terms of the ads dashboard. But as an environment, as a user environment, if Sandy Hawkins from which was is the head of advertising for the US department of TikTok. She put it best. I mean, it was people check Facebook, but they watch TikTok. So that just tells you everything. Like you check Facebook, you scroll through for however long. But when you go on TikTok, like Chris mentioned, you're engaged. You're stuck to it because they're showing you things you want to see. So that's kind of like the 
the biggest thing in terms of the environment. Uh, in terms of how the ads appear, they appear the best performing ads appear more native to the platform. You know, like let's say it's a product, it's more so I'm reviewing a product or saying, hey, I just bought this or TikTok made me buy it is the most recent hashtag trend where people are like reviewing products they saw on TikTok. And then as a business, you can feed off of this organic traffic and just continue to promote to hashtags that are regarding your product. Gotcha. So real quick, and sorry if I'm a little off script here, but let's say Ben, so you know Facebook, you know LinkedIn, you know other platforms. Let's say I'm an advertiser, I'm running on Facebook and LinkedIn already. I wanna try TikTok, I wanna get started with TikTok. Where's the learning curve? I know in terms of the interface, it looks almost exactly like Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, but where's the big learning curve, you think? The biggest learning curve, I'd say, is in content creation. So one of the big reasons why TikTok is such a big opportunity is that many advertisers may either not have the resources to continuously produce, you know, engaging video content. They may not be cost effective for their business. That's the biggest learning curve. And the biggest also kind of like the hardest thing to snap out of is that marketing, you know, digital creative mentality where you're trying to get a nice professionally produced clean product and get something that's more user generated looking. So it looks like, you know, somebody that, you know, I went out on my iPhone to the gas station and filmed it. And that that's what works on TikTok. It's something that looks like, hey, I'm Joe Schmo and I'm reviewing this product and I think you should try it too because if you like cars, you're going to like this wrench or whatever, you know? Yep. So it's safe to say you can't take your highly produced like 30 second TV spot that you're running on national TV and just run that on TikTok and hope for the best. Like that definitely won't work. It's basically like selfie videos. I know most of the ads that we've done have basically just been very lo-fi, unproduced, just kind of selfie videos. Well, I'm always, I'm always about testing. So it, it might, you know, the general best practice though is yeah, to do like, I, I don't want to say unprofessional looking because if you look at the top content creators, they work really hard and have professional skill sets to make the videos look unprofessional. You know, they sound good. They're not grainy. They're edited well. So, but like, user generated content is what works best. And that's been my experience. One of, and I know we'll touch on this a little bit later on as well, but one of my top performing creative when I ran a lot of traffic in the auto insurance vertical, we were touching on the extremely high prices of gas. And the angle was, hey, we're helping people save money on car insurances, on car insurance services. And then in turn, they're getting free gas because they're using those savings to pay for gas. So our top creative was we walked up to people, random people at the gas station, handed them $20 and told them, hey, we saved so much money on our, on our car insurance that we're paying for your gas. And then had them sign a consent form and, you know, film a little like snippet. Hey, they paid for our gas today or something like that. I forgot exactly what it was. That is so clever. I imagine that pulled like crazy. It did. It performed really, really well. And the other thing that you have to consider for TikTok is the fact that TikTok works on con on constant new content and stuff going viral, new trends going viral, new content going viral. And if you're showing the same TikTok over and over, you don't want to see it. You know, people don't want to see it. That's a part of the big reason why, you know, some Facebook, the sentiment toward Facebook ads is not as good because people are seeing the same scam ad all the time and they're like well this is a scam why doesn't facebook ever take these down you know stuff like that so that leads me into my next point in order to succeed on tiktok you constantly have to like upload fresh creative and uh part of that is because there's such a thing called ai creative fatigue so it's when tiktok's ai has seen an ad so often that it kind of like doesn't give it as good of a placement in their feed. So it doesn't show it to the users most likely to 
to engage with it after a while. I, I don't want to set a hard date on it because it varies. So one easy way to remedy this is take that same core video that was working and add, you know, viral trends to the beginning of it. So one of the biggest trends that for lead generation has been what's one website you've seen that sounds like it should be illegal to know, but isn't. And then you just take your video where we talked about how, you know, we paid for somebody's gas using the savings. And we just put an intro of a creator saying, hey, here's one website that, you know, should be illegal, but isn't. And then you run that and that TikTok's AI sees that as a fresh creative. It's metadata is all different. And it just, it AI picks up different words in it and it just sees it as a fresh creative. Now, Ben, um, and I'm sorry, I'm like derailing way off script here, but I wasn't a believer really in, uh, uh, with TikTok until probably probably around the time that you started here, Ben, probably like a, you know, a year or so ago when you told me the story of uh, car insurance and you were pulling long form leads, meaning like many fields, uh, including pages. 17 page, 17 page form, including a vehicle identification number in the auto insurance niche. Uh, and or vertical and what what was your CPA or your cost per lead so, on that? Just a little correction on that. It was automatically pulling the vehicles based on the user's address, and then users were selecting the address. And I think it was I'd have to check a six in between a six to eight dollar cost per wow. completed form. So I was like, oh my goodness! Like you might get a six to eight dollar cost per cost per lead on Facebook on like a lead ad, but on a seventeen page form. And then he showed me the creative and I was like, whoa, like this is a new world. So at some point, like I want to get to the rest of Jared's questions and I want to take some questions for the audience, but I would love to show everybody here like an example of one of those creative pieces because that was kind of like the aha moment for me. And I was like, we could do that. Like we could walk up to someone in the gas station. Why not? It's, it's literally as simple as that. It's it, as creative as you can get, you know, and the better. And uh, the other thing, you know, you have to, I, I would say one of the biggest things for success on TikTok is you kind of have to be an avid TikTok user because that way you can get a better feel of what's trending, what sounds are working, you know, and especially if you engage with a lot of content in your specific vertical, then you can start to see what hashtags are working, what sounds are being shown in that vertical. I would almost go as far as saying if you have a separate account just for your business and just engage with only things related to your business and in that vertical. So you only get shown videos for that vertical. Mm. So a uh, real quick reminder, if anybody has any burning questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Yep, Danielle wants to see the creative. I want to see it too again. Um, so we can definitely do that at some point, uh, but feel free to drop your, any, any specific questions you've got in the chat and we'll do our best to get to them here. Um, including the creative, uh, which do you have that handy, Ben, or I think I have it saved. I could pull it up real quick. Uh, or do you not want to show it? Oh, I don't care. It's uh, I'm looking for it. I have it somewhere. I have something similar, if that works. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. While we're pulling that up, Lauren has a question about average video time suggestion for the ads. Like, how long should they be? So TikTok recommends between, what was it, 24 and, give me one second. I have the exact data here in my notes. It's... uh. TikTok recommends between 21 and 34 seconds. Personally, I've tested that and found for lead generation, depending, you know, 45 seconds has worked best for me. So it's not that far off. Like, like, you know, it's one of those things that you should always be testing, you know, just test shorter videos, longer videos, run them in a one-to-one -one test and see, see what happens, see what your audience likes. So I do have one of your ads pulled up here if you're still looking for it. That's fine. You can show it. Yeah. We'll make sure you can share, Chris, and we will get this going. I want to see this again. You're good. Let's see. So I've unplugged my headset also so you can see. Can everybody see my screen here? Got it. What's a creative? 
crazy hack you have found that has saved you money. Okay, check this out. I'm going to show you how I afforded this car, okay? All right, you guys ready? Car insurance, $118. That's what I was paying. Yes, I, I picked up the car a few months ago and watched this. Ready? $97 premium. My fees were $20. Okay, $118. Now I cover up my private information, guys. $39, $118, $500 for comprehensive, $500 for collision, $500 comprehensive, $500 for collision. Okay, you see, they're the exact same model. The Hyundai Ionic, Hyundai Ionic. It's the same policy. $118 to $39. As you can see, I have full coverage. I have a premium policy. I love my coverage and I love my insurance company, but I was paying a lot and I didn't even realize it. Scroll down, you go to yours. Take two minutes, guys. It's free. Stop overpaying. Fill this out. So, yeah, and one thing, if you notice, the biggest thing is the language, you know, that's being used in the video, it's not super, uh, you know, professional, it's not super polished, it's kind of like how I would be talking, you know, to a good friend of mine, like, hey, you all need to check this out right now, you know, so that's kind of what I mean by looking unprofessional, but the production quality of the video was actually pretty good. Yeah, I also noticed in that ad and the other one, you did a couple of things. There was a small bit of education like it was like, hey, here's the type of policy. Like, see, this is a deductible, you know, it's like a small bit of education, but it also, and I think this is important is it shows the landing page. So that's like a scent trail type of a thing. So the extent to which your ad can kind of set expectations and look similar to that, to what the landing page would look like. And I noticed in Ben, like the various ads that you would send me, like there's always some portion where it's like, guys, like look here, and you're showing the actual landing page experience which I imagine has to contribute to probably pretty dramatic, dramatically high conversion rates. Cause I've already been there. I've already seen it. I know what to expect. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, one of the biggest things in a lot of these ads, if you notice, especially for products like insurance, insurance products and stuff, people want to save money. If they can, they want to, they want to like not miss out on things. So if everybody else is doing it, they want to do it too. I mean, that's the biggest thing. And they also, if people feel like they know something that not a lot of other people know, or they're in the know on something that also gets people to engage really well. So to answer your question, I'm not sure what the product is, but if you can do something like that, then you can probably increase your engagement rate significantly. Love it. So hands on keyboard, like, like say I want to get started. Like I want to run a campaign. I guess before we talk about like ad formats and things like that, what are some things I should do before setting a campaign up? Uh, I'd get the pixel set up and integrate it into your website or e-commerce platform, whatever it is that you use. That's number one thing. Start collecting as much data as you can prior to sending any, 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 you know, traffic from TikTok. Mm -hmm. Then I would also Honestly, like I said, spend some time scrolling through, see what works, get an idea. I would also play with the creative center. And I don't know how many of you guys have messed around with or actually looked at TikTok's like top ads creative center. Let me. Plus one, Jack. We got to know. Oh, one second. Let me just pull it up and send the link over here in the. So I have it right here. So if you check out the creative center here, I mean, you can do a bunch of things. One of the biggest thing is you can sort by country and look, you know, for whatever demographic you're targeting, you can sort by industry as well as campaign objective, uh, objectives. You can like separate between conversion or app installs or just generic reach campaigns. And then you can also, you know, sh sort by click-through rate. So you can find the highest click-through rate ads mm. and the view rate. So if you don't know what to run, you can sort by your industry and just get a general idea of what's working for your competitors and at least have a jumping off point. 
And the biggest thing in terms of engagement, you can look at six second view rate, because if people are watching six seconds, TikTok will count that as an impression. Dude, I wish Facebook had this. <laughs> it's amazing. They yeah, do, it's like it a just, built in spy tool. Yeah. Facebook has it, it just doesn't work very well because <laughs> it's Facebook. But anyway, yeah, that's because that's that's Cheryl Sanford's not there anymore. <laughs> RIP. So very important question for you, Ben. How long do you think until TikTok hires Sheryl Sandberg? If I had to give an over-under. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, so it's, and then there's another tool where you can actually see the top trending. Uh, you can see like the trending hashtags so if you one second let me see if you guys can see this i don't know if you have to have a tiktok account okay a tiktok account to explore it or not but it's called kind of like their inspiration center if you scroll down uh jared uh, a little bit more and and hit explore now So you can actually look based on what hashtags are trending in a specific industry. You can look at what songs are trending, mm. what creators are trending. And the reason why what creators are trending is important for your specific industry is because you can find popular creators in your industry and then through TikTok's uh, creative market or creator marketplace, you can actually reach out to these specific content creators and have them produce videos for you for, you know, they set their price or whatever their fee is. And you can find, you know, a creator that fits your brand's look and feel and go from there. Wow, so they've got like an influencer marketing platform baked into their app, that's cool. That is so cool. That is definitely useful. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So once yeah. I, so I got Chris. Is there a rule of thumb, Ben, for the going rate? Like how much does it cost to hire somebody with a million followers or 10 million? Or is it just like all over the board? I mean, it's whatever that person thinks they're worth, I would imagine. You know, it's, I can't say that there's a set like average as to what they, you know, as to what, the going rate would be obviously the more followers, the more people are going to charge. So yep. even if you, and then the hashtag piece is very important because it gives you the top hashtags. You can see the analytics and how this correlates to face uh, to uh, TikTok ads is that you can actually target specific, specific hashtags in TikTok and it'll show it only to users that have engaged with that specific hashtag over a certain amount of time. Wow, this is a really useful and insightful like market research tool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was you can see creators. That's awesome. So once I've done my homework, um, got my pixel installed, um, figured out which creators are working, what options do I have for, for ads? Like what are my different ad formats on TikTok? Yeah, so TikTok actually has seven or so different ad formats. Uh, it falls under the three like primary categories like Facebook. I mean, it falls under, I believe it's awareness, consideration, conversions. And once you explore, I don't know if, how much experience you guys have within TikTok's ads dashboard but it really really all the languaging feels like facebook circa last year i mean they basically copied it almost word for word uh but the seven ad objectives fall onto three categories awareness where the only like objective is reach so you're going to try to show your ads as many people as you can for your budget it falls under consideration then the next category is consideration where the first ad objective is traffic, where 
you're trying to drive as many people to a specific website link that you choose for your budget. The next is app installs, which you're trying to get as many app installs as you can for your budget, which I think TikTok will be releasing like a sort of a value-based app install, kind of like how Facebook has, where you can optimize for the customer value after they've downloaded the app. Uh, you can optimize by video views. So what percentage, you know, get people to watch your video and then you can create retargeting audiences based on percentage or time watched. And then lead generation, which is almost identical to Facebook lead forms. And I believe you can also have it like LinkedIn, have it where it pre-populates the user's profile email address into the form. So it makes it even easier to collect that information. Gotcha. And then finally, you have conversions where, you know, you have your convert standard conversions campaign where you would optimize for a specific event, whether it's completed form or purchase. And then you can do catalog ads, which is basically identical to Facebook's catalog ads, where you show people a number of items from your catalog dynamically, and then they can click that or they can choose whichever they'd like to more information on. Gotcha. Makes sense. And how do I target these ads? I know there are hashtags, but how does that work in, in TikTok? So you have a number of different targeting options within TikTok. You can actually do matched audiences, so custom audiences like you would in Facebook. You can do lookalikes based off of those custom audiences. You can also do what they call automatic targeting, where TikTok kind of decides where what's best. And part of me, I've never really tried it because I have no faith in, you know, them knowing my consumer better than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but part of me almost feels like maybe it's worth the test because TikTok is so good at showing, you know, specific videos to people that they're interested in. Maybe it might work extremely well. It's worth testing. Uh you can also target based on interest and behavior. So you can target based on how much time they spend on platform. You can test, you know, or you can uh, target based on what, if they have interest in like tech, e-commerce, whether they're engaged shoppers, whether they have interest in financial services. And then within the financial services, you can further drill down. You can do like securities, insurances, credit bureaus. But the two biggest things that I like is you can actually target people. So if they've interacted, let's say, you can select categories of videos they've interacted with. So mm -hmm. if they've interacted with video, with finance videos and watched it till the end for the last 15 or 17 days, you can target these people. And mm -hmm. same way with the, with the creators. So if you go back to your, you know, the top creators thing, you can find the list of the most engaged with creators in your vertical and target people who have actually watched videos in the last seven days. So it's fresh on their mind. Wow. Wow. And, and then further, you know, drill down with some hashtags, you know, to, if you, let's say you want to target people with debt and then you want to target, you know, you would uh, target people who are, you know, in the financial service have watched and interacted videos in the financial services category then you could target by like unsecured debt and further drill down to like your ideal customer wow. and then of course you have the standard you know operating system you know targeting where you can split out ios and android uh the one thing worth noting in terms of campaign structure and this is kind of a tiktok best practice and i've always adhered to it and it's worked well for me in the past is separating out your iOS 14.5 plus campaigns into their own campaign level campaign. So that's what I would do. Traditionally, I always run CBO. Like it's just worked way better in the last year compared to when compared to ad set budgets. I'll run lowest cost unless I notice that my costs just like shoot up significantly over the couple days in which case i might pause it and launch a manual bid campaign to try to like bully my competitors out and make them spend more money than they want to to kind of like back off but that's obviously dependent on client budget and 
you know, whether or not it, we can afford to spend, you know, that increased cost for a couple of days to bully people out. That's funny, bullying them out of the auction. Yeah. Uh, um, well, this is fascinating. Um, once again, anybody that you have, if you have specific questions before I derail into some other nerdy uh, <laughs> aspect here, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, I am curious. So, so it sounds like, so I guess what's, what's your playbook in terms of uh, targeting? Like, let's just say a lead gen, like the lead gen objective. Are you always using the lead gen objective or do you like start broad with awareness and then build an audience and retarget? Like, is there, is there a go-to playbook that you have in terms of, in terms of so targeting? That depends on the vertical, the, you know, the client's goals. My, if it's a new account, a new TikTok account or a new TikTok pixel, I should say, if it's a new TikTok pixel, traditionally I'll want to start a campaign with that's more targeted and hyper-focused on my ideal consumer to try to get, you know, that initial data, I would say TikTok recommends 50 conversions. I like to get at least a hundred conversions if possible on the pixel of my, you know, as close to my ideal consumer as possible. And after that, you know, obviously the more targeting you layer on, the more expensive traffic gets. Uh, after that, after that initial like learning period, I want to call it, uh, you can switch over to broad targeting and TikTok will do actually a pretty good, pretty, pretty good job of uh, getting your consumer. The only targeting I would do on broad is age. You know, if I want to drill down to a 25, you know, 25 and up, I would target by age. I would leave gender, everything, you know, let TikTok decide. I mean, it's TikTok is 60% female. So you're going to, you know, naturally get a higher female than male. It's interesting. But now, um, talk to me about lead quality. So I have a buddy named G. Uh, he's a French guy and founder of Lemlist, which is an email platform. And he uses TikTok for recruiting. So he like did a video where he was kind of in this mansion and it was just kind of like a catchy video where he like pointed up and it was like saying the benefits of working there. So he says he got thousands of applications, like thousands. And the cost per application was like 50 cents or something. Um, but, but he said most of them were just junk. He, they, like he found several good ones and I think made some hires, but he had to like wade through a bunch of junk. Like, do you find that the lead quality Obviously, it won't be like Google search, but is it comparable with Facebook or like, like what do you see in lead quality wise? I would veer to say that it, it's as good as Facebook, if not better. A big portion of what factors lead quality is your value proposition and creative. I mean, if you're making a creative that, you know, you're telling people if they sign up for this website, they're going to get, you know, a check in the mail that gives them free money from the government or whatever. Obviously, your lead quality is going to be junk. But if you accurately describe your product and give like a truthful review, then chances are the lead quality is going to be pretty, pretty good. And I mean, obviously, it'll get better as the pixel gathers more data. And as time goes on, that lead quality will also improve. But I mean, 50 cent leads and just tons of junk in it sounds like either a creative problem or they weren't optimizing for, they were maybe optimizing for like a, what's the word I'm looking for, for like a lower objective, like a traffic or lead generation objective because even Facebook lead ads, I don't know if you guys have any experience with Facebook lead ads when they initially came out, you couldn't fire you know, you couldn't fire an event based on how that user acted down funnel. So Facebook would just try to get you as many cheap leads as possible for your budget. And then most of them would be junk, you know? Yeah. So if you optimize for like a uh, completed registration and have a form, you know, like a thorough form that asks qualifying questions and then score the lead and pass that back to, to TikTok, then your quality will be higher. I mean, it's the platform's not inherently bad. It's mostly set up and creative a lot of the times I find. Great. So I know probably a lot of people on this call or some people are wondering, 
they're thinking about trying TikTok. Maybe they haven't tried it yet, but they may be wondering like, hey, will this work for my business, right? Because mm -hmm. TikTok generally skews younger. You know, it's kind of, uh, it's an up and coming platform. So, so what would you actually, say, like, if you... I just wanted to, it skews younger, but I was actually extremely surprised as to how how the demographic is getting significantly older. I mean, I believe Comscore reported 38% of users as being 30 plus. In my traffic, I actually saw 41% of my users on a broad targeting campaign being 30 plus. So wow. I just found that interesting. So if you could fill in the blank, like if your business is blank or blank, you absolutely got to get on TikTok like today. If it's blank or blank, Think about it, add it to the roadmap. But if it's blank or blank, like it's probably not for you. So off the top of my head, I can't think of any business that I wouldn't run on TikTok unless it's like expressly prohibited by TikTok, which I think certain, I think payday loans and certain stuff like that is prohibited, which you can't run on TikTok for very long. You'll get banned. Uh if you run e-commerce, definitely you need to be on there. Lead generation, definitely need to be on there. For B2B, any B2B related product, you should also have a presence, but you're going to have to think of it as more so like an education and awareness platform as opposed to a bottom of funnel. So you would, you know, obviously be collecting engagers and then retargeting them, retargeting them, uh, you know, via other means the yeah i mean i e-commerce definitely like if you have an e-commerce website and you're not running or if you don't at least have a presence organic presence on tiktok then you're missing out so e-commerce definitely b2c lead generation absolutely b2b it might be iffy like i could see maybe if you're you know some like if you offer like if you're an accountant for instance would you consider TikTok? Like say you're a CPA or an accounting firm, professional yes, service. Yes, I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I mean, so you can also hyper-target just by based on DMA and zip codes. So it'll target only people in your region that you service and go from there, you know, just do a video. Hey, and I would take an educational approach to that. Like, what is that tax law that if you own your own LLC, you know, you can actually rent and you work from home, you can actually rent a portion of your house to your business for 14 days out of the year and write that off, you know, for whatever market rate is on the rent. So you do a video like that and then say, hey, if you want more tax tips like this, subscribe to my newsletter and then collect the lead form opt-in and start just remarketing them like that. And then eventually sell them, hey, come try us out today and go from there and see what your rate is there. I mean, I would do accountant. I would even say recruiting. I mean, lately I've been seeing DoorDash has been doing a really, really big, big recruiting campaign to find drivers. I mean, I, I, I have to say I see at least 10 DoorDash ads a day and I don't spend that much time on TikTok ad, on TikTok, like scrolling, maybe in 30 minutes a day. So they're pushing it big right now. Mm. So it must be working. Interesting. Lauren has a question. Um, has anyone run into any security issues or scams on the platform? And is it safe to provide credit card info for paid ads? So their platform is extremely buggy. It's gotten a little better. I've had no... So it, are you talking about actually inputting your credit card into the platform and having it be leaked or something like that? I just want to understand the question a little better. Yeah, because uh, to pay for ads. Oh, yeah. So, no, we haven't had any issues. Uh, <clears throat> whenever we ran as affiliates, we would, obviously, we wouldn't use, like, our primary primary uh, business card. We would use a service called Trade Shift Go. It's powered by uh, Amex. And what that allows you to do is you can actually put a MasterCard on file and then generate VCCs with unique VINs. So you could theoretically run an infinite number of accounts and that also protects you because you can shut down the card at any time. So long story short, you can also pay with the VCC if 
that makes, you know, if it gives you that extra level of comfort that, you know, you can always shut it off to prevent charges if your account ever gets hacked. We've never had an issue though. We've actually had Facebook accounts be hijacked, but never TikTok. Interesting. Now, in terms of regulation and ad approval, being that it's all video content, it would seem like an even more difficult challenge than Facebook is having in terms of ad approval. But after the whole Cambridge Analytica thing, Facebook just got like super strict on approvals and they would disapprove everything. How's TikTok on, on approvals? Significantly better. I mean, uh, so Facebook does most of their initial ad reviews via AI. So, you know, AI is good, but it's not perfect. So even if it flags certain elements of a video that might possibly match a video that was run on a banned ad account, you know, it'll ban you even if it's not the same video. And I mean, Facebook also has that celebrity policy, which it does a good job of detecting celebrities. And we figured out that their AI does that via the eyes, you know, so if you cover up the eyes on a celebrity, you could actually sneak ads through with celebrities in them. Uh, so we'd be Photoshopping sunglasses and stuff, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff. TikTok is better than that. Like you can't get away with that stuff, but if you follow their policies, they're actually pretty, pretty lenient and they're fast too, lightning fast. So. I think it's AI as well. There's no way that, you know, they would be able to approve ads that fast on TikTok if it wasn't AI based. Yeah. Are there any like upcoming features that we should know about? Like what are some um, <clears throat> down the pike roadmap ad features? So, that, yeah. I've been kind of hearing, you know, from a few people actually, I haven't confirmed from a TikTok rep, but I've heard that they launched a beta for select partners, you know, managed partners, I'm assuming, of search ads. Mm. So search ads native within TikTok's platform. And I mean, I'm excited. This is big because if you can target on specific search terms, you now have intent and interest. So this automatically goes from like a middle of funnel, you know, hey, I'm just kind of exploring. I want more information to I'm ready to buy this because I'm searching it and I want more information. Give it to me now. So that... I can't wait for that to come out. That wow, that is out. exciting. Yeah, and Melissa Castro commented earlier that she uses TikTok as Yelp slash Google search already. Yep. So that's that's really interesting. Yeah, and I mean, I'm guilty. I'm, you know, the ideal marketing consumer. I bought a bunch of random stuff off of that I've seen on TikTok and I'm like, this looks cool. And they've TikTok like reviews and have never steered me wrong. So I can see why a lot of people would feel that way. Brilliant. Well, Ben, you are amazing, man. I'm so happy to have you. Uh, not just because you know TikTok, but I just love the way you think, you know, like with your affiliate background, I think it makes you really kind of feisty and scrappy, but then you also just have this great business acumen. So props to you. Thank you uh, for coming here today. I would love to just hang out with you for a whole day and watch over your shoulder as you're just like killing these ad accounts. Um, yeah. If, if any of you guys would like to hang out with, uh, with Ben more, or if you want some advice or an approach on getting started with TikTok, if you want some ad concept ideas or things like that, like Ben was just saying right off the top of his head, just this fire. Hey, if you're an accountant, like talk about this, you know, potential loophole. Um, so we can definitely hook you up. We're here for you. We want to help. You can uh, get in touch with us. I appreciate everybody coming out here today. Uh, we do have probably about five or 10 more minutes. If you guys want to stick around, we can, we can continue talking. Yep. Uh, we do this every week on Wednesdays at noon Eastern. It's 12 p.m. Yep. So, uh, and we'll be doing different topics. We're open to topic ideas if there's any, anything that you guys want us to cover. But, uh, but it's fun time. So we hope to see you guys back. Let your colleagues know, and we will see you around. Looks, oh, we got a bunch yep. of new messages coming. Around. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa actually had a question in terms yeah. of content creation. Do you find using the Stitcher Duet tool helps engagement? Yes, it does. And I've actually been noodling around a few ideas in my head to like utilize this even more. The biggest thing is there's been a trend going on lately where it's like, what's now that you no longer work for this company, what's one secret you can share? So like duetting that and then sharing like 
hey, use our pro use this, you know, auto insurance service. Now that I, now that I no longer work for company X, use this service and say this and this on the form and you can save X amount of money, you know? So doing something like that. And that's one of, with the like stitch tool. And the other idea I've had is a lot of times you'll get, if you allow user comments on your ads, you'll get negative like comments. So what, especially like in a B2B scenario, let's use a marketing agency as, you know, a case. Let's say somebody asks a question, you can actually make a video that directly responds to that question and run that as an ad if it's a common question. So like kind of stitch it where it shows the comment in like a little chat box and the video. I know you guys have seen that. I forgot what it's called exactly. Yeah. So I'm sorry, rewind for me. What is the Stitcher Duet tool exactly? So Stitch is like, let's say you start a trend where it's like the share, what one thing, you know, that sounds like it should be like the creative you showed earlier. Then you splice in a video where it's like, hey, I'm user responding to this, to this like challenge. That's a Stitch. Duet is where like somebody shares an opinion and then it's like a picture in picture, like a split screen like where you're responding to this person's opinion. Ah, interesting. And that's an ad form. Like those are, you can run those, those as are, ads or just organic. They're video styles, but you can kind of like stylize your, your ad creative to look kind of like that. And that adds one more like step into looking more native and organic. If you notice the best ads on TikTok don't look like ads. Like you, you'll sit there and watch them for like a good, you know, 20 seconds before you even see the sponsored and realize it's an ad. Cause I know I've done it and uh, that, that would definitely help engagement and it has for me. So that's awesome. Yeah. Ads that don't look like ads seem to be a trend that aren't going away. Useful ads, engaging ads. And it would seem that there's not a ton of uh, learning curve for anyone that knows Facebook or, you know, paid social in general, in terms of the platform itself but it would seem a good time to invest in the content capabilities to create said ads because it sounds like you need to create them at a fairly high velocity. How long does it take for an ad to burn out usually? Like, is it like a day, a week, a month? Obviously it depends on spend and such, but what's your rule of thumb where you expect I, an ad to start burning out? I generally look at indicators like when, you know, when CTR starts to drop, and cost per cost per whatever you're optimizing for goes up. Uh, generally, it's not so much that, you know, it's not so much like actual banner blindness that causes ad fatigue. In my experience, it's more like I mentioned earlier, AI ad fatigue, where TikTok's AI just gets tired, like, hey, you need new content, like this is boring now. You know, like they're they're and not to say that it's boring, but, you know, I would say a good strategy, maybe have four or five different creatives to start out and then rotate every 10 days, obviously, you know, based on performance. Then there's other things that you can do to make the video look new in TikTok's eyes. You know, you can add different intros to the video, different hooks, and to get people to engage with, or you can even add like a sound, like a subtle musical track over it. And that kind of uh, models it in such a way that it looks different in TikTok's AI's eyes when they scan and analyze that video. So there's little ways where you can extend the life of, but I would say on a big budget, anything $1,500 a day or over, rotate creatives every 10 days. You can reuse the same creatives, you know, you know, just don't, you know, you can't expect to run the same creative for, you know, three months on end, like you would for, with Facebook because TikTok will prioritize new content. Interesting. So it's not so much about engaging people as it is engaging the robots. Yes. I mean, in, you know, they're engaging the robots in terms of placement and deliverability. Yes. But, you know, in terms of performance, you obviously want to engage people. <laughs> right, right. Robots don't convert. <laughs> fascinating all right well i think i'm gonna go download the tiktok app again i'm gonna put on my blue light glasses just so I don't <laughs> like. uh, there you go 
but this is really fascinating. Um, uh, Casey has a question. Um, do you send a calendar invites or emails each? Oh, yes. So for the growth clinic, um, yeah, uh, there's a, you can, uh, once you've registered, you can add it uh, as a calendar event through the registration link, um, or I can just manually add you to, we have an ongoing uh, calendar event every week. Um, but yeah, and then you'll be on uh, the sessions to come. Yep. Yeah. And if you want, just drop your email in the chat here and we'll make sure that you get on the list. Yep. And if you guys have any questions, I'm dropping my email in the chat here now. Feel free to hit me up and we will get you taken care of. Oh, and uh, Nina. That. I had uh, one final thought to add before everything. Uh, Please. I'll sit here and listen to you as long as you want to go. <laughs> Same. I don't have much experience with it but i've been noodling a lot with it is spark ads so basically what this allows you to do is if you find the creator that you like in your specific vertical and they have a post or they post let's say you reach an agreement with them to make an ad and they post it to their organic post to their organic like uh, actual tiktok creator profile you can actually within the platform reach an agreement with them to hey let me boost your post as my ad. So it looks like it's coming, you know, let's say Web Mechanics is TikTok and we post for a client, let's say we can make it look like the ad is coming from our profile. So it's not, look. it looks even less like an ad. It just has a very little sponsored, but it looks like it's coming from the creator's profile. So that mm -hmm. adds in that extra layer of making it look organic and making it look like, hey, this isn't an ad. It's just me telling you about something I found out. Wow. So is that almost like a way to license other people's content in a way? It's yes and no. It's more so licensing the use of their like name and likeness, you know, so because you're it looks like it's coming from their profile and it looks like they actually, you know, they're promoting the ad and said you're paying for the ads on the back end. Interesting. And those are called Spark, Spark ads? Spark ads. Yeah, they're relatively new. I want to say last eight months or so interesting and how are how do you pay for them you would pay for them like you would any other ad i mean you're not you're reaching through the creator marketplace you can contact these creators and reach an agreement to their through their you know usually it's usually it's people who have created content for you through the creator marketplace you can ask them hey can i use you know promote this as if they were through your page so that's how it works Interesting. 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 Cool. Well, I think I'm in the wrong business. I'm going to hereby retire from web mechanics <laughs> and become a TikTok creator. All right. See. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so they're actually offering a $5,000 incentive if you have a following on other channels and you can become a creator. Really? There you go. They're, they're bribing people to grow their creator base. Wow. Fascinating. All right. Well, any other closing thoughts or last, last moment questions here? We've got about one minute here. Yep. And you can catch the recordings. Um, I just dropped a link to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe there, we usually post them one to two days after. Um, so you can catch those all there. And folks who dropped their email, I've added you to the invite. So you should be uh, good to go for next week. Yeah, we should talk about YouTube sometime too. I think that's a, that's a big opportunity. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all. Well, much love. Thank you for your time here today. We look forward to hopefully seeing you again next week or hearing from you otherwise. We're here for you. Just give us a shout. See you soon, yeah. Rockstars. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. This was amazing. Thank you. Appreciate you. Fun. All right, cool. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.